All right, good evening, everyone. So we'll be starting from chapter one, the need for cyber security. So these chapters explain what cyber security is and why the demand for cyber security professional is growing. And it also explains what your online identity and data is, where it is, and why it is of interest to cyber criminals. Also, we discuss what organizational data is and why it must be protected. It also discusses who the cyber attacker are and what they want. And cyber security professional must have the same skills as the cyber attackers. But cyber security professional must work within the bound of local, national, and international law. So cyber security professional must also use their skills ethically. Also included in this chapter is content that briefly explains cyber warfare and why nations and government need cyber security professionals to help protect their citizen and infrastructure. I hope I'm holding everyone. Please, can someone respond? If I'm holding you. Yes. Yes, sir, we can hear you clearly, sir. All right, sir. So, in this theoretical session, there will be an assessment for everyone and the assessments will be timed. And the question is also set within the context of the course content. And I want this session to be A question and answer interactive class. Yeah. So we are starting from section 1.1, personal data, introduction to personal data. And this page talks about what is cyber security. If we look at this picture. So you can see that there's a lot of names and some devices. Information network has become organizations such as medical, financial, and educate effectively. And they utilize the network by collecting, processing, story, and sharing vast amounts of digital information. As more digital information is gathered and shared, the protection of this information is becoming even more vital to our national security and economic stability. Now, cyber security is the ongoing effort to protect this network system and all the data from unauthorized use or harm. On a personal level, you need to safeguard your identity, your data, and your computing devices. And at the corporate level, it is everyone's responsibility to protect the organization's reputation, data, and customer. And at the state level, national security and the safety and well-being of the citizens are at stake. Your online and offline identity. Identity, both online and offline, can affect our life. Your offline identity is the person who your friends and family interact with daily at home, at school or work. They know your personal information, such as your name, age, or where you live. Please, can you give me five?
Yeah, sorry for the interruption. So as I was saying, your offline identity is the person who your friends and family interact with daily at home, at school or work, and they know your personal information, such as your name, age, or where you live. Your online, your online identity is who you are in cyberspace. Your online identity is how you present yourself to others online. And this online identity should only reveal a limited amount of information about you. I know most of us, if not all, make use of the Facebook social platform. So when signing up or on our profile page, we need to, it is advisable to adjust the kind of information that we put on our profile, like our email, your phone number, and also, funny enough, this platform has made sure of security. Like if you have your email, your phone number, you can actually set the view to only you so that you'll be the only one that have access to the information. And most people now, you're looking at their Facebook platform. You can tell everything about them and they'll be vulnerable to a lot of scammer calling them, in fact, even describing every of their details. So we should take care when choosing a username or alias for our online identity. The username should not include any personal information and it should be something appropriate and respectful. Like the username should not lead strangers to think you are an easy target for cyber crimes or unwanted attention. Please, if you have any question, you can make use of the icon to signify so that we can add it. Now, we are in the section of your data. Any information about you can be considered to be your data. And this personal information can uniquely identify you as an individual. And this data includes the pictures and messages that you can exchange with your family and friends online. Another information such as name, social security number, date, and place of birth, or mother's meeting name, is known by you and used to identify you. So information such as medical, educational, and financial employment information can also be used to identify us online. So in this point, we have medical record, educational record, employment, and financial record. So, most of this reading will be done by you guys. I will just explain some few, few things that I can. Now, if you see the picture on that page, it says your data, data on your computing devices, medical data, employment, information online, your identity, education data, and financial data. These are all uh, data. So now, where is your data? The question. All this information is about you, and there are different laws that protect your privacy and data in your country. But do you know where your data is? When you are at the doctor's office, the conversation you have with the doctor is recorded in your medical chart for billing purposes. This information may be shared with the insurance company to ensure appropriate billing and quality. Now, a part of your medical record for the visit is also at the insurance company. And the store, the store loyalty card may be a convenient way to save money for your purchases. However, the store is compiling a profile of your purchases and using that information for its own use. 
for its own use. The profile shows a buyer purchases a certain brand and flavor of toothpaste regularly. And the store uses this information to target the buyer with special offer from the marketing partner by using the loyalty card. And the, the store and the marketing partner also have a profile for the purchasing behavior of the customer. When you share your pictures online with your friends, do you know who may have a copy of the pictures? And copy of the picture are on your devices. Your friends may have copies of those pictures downloaded on their device. If the picture are shared publicly, and strangers may have copy copies of them too. They could download those pictures or take screenshots of those pictures because the picture were posted online. And they also saved on servers located in different parts of the world. Now, what I've been saying since whereby we make use of our purchase card like MasterCard, credit card, all our information are stored with the store owner on their own platform. And also, if we patronize them regularly, they will actually know the behavior of our purchase. And cyber criminal might exploit that. And also when we share pictures online, online too, immediately we share the picture and everyone sees it. Those people we share it too, we have our own data. For example, like WhatsApp, you know, WhatsApp has a feature of sending a one-time view picture. Immediately you send it and you view it once and you go back, you'll be able to view it again. But before terminating that view, some criminals might, some cyber criminals, let me, let me not use that. Some might actually screenshot it and save it on their devices and make use of it for whatever purpose might want to use it for. So, Next is your computing devices. Your computing devices do not just store your data. Now, these devices have become the portal to your data and generate information about you. Unless you have chosen to receive paper statement for all your account, you use your computing device to access the data. Okay, can you, can you hear me now? Hello, can someone yes, sir. answer? We can, we can hear you, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Now, your computing devices do not just store your data. This device has also become the portal to your data and generate information about us. Unless we've chosen to receive paper statement for all our account, use our, you use your computer to access the data. And if you want a digital copy of the most recent credit card statement, you use your computing device to access the website of the credit card issuer. And if you want to pay your credit card bill online, you access the website of your bank to transfer the phone using your computing devices. And beside allowing you to access your information, computing devices can also generate information about you. And with all this information about you available online, your personal data has become profitable to hackers. With everything we've been discussing, starting from our online and offline identity, our data, and our computing devices, we all need to be careful of how we then share our information. So we move to topic personal data as a target. What do cyber criminal want? Your money. Though it's not everyone that it's not most of the cyber criminal that want money. And we have different sections of, of it. We have activists. Some make use of 
a vulnerability in a system to expose to expose shady business of different kind of people. Now, if you have anything of value, the criminals want it. That's just it. Your online credentials are valuable. And these credentials give the thieves access to your account. You may think the frequent clients mice you have earned are not valuable to cyber criminals. Think again. For example, when you go to go to the bank, we do make use of teller. And they do give us a receipt. So some might actually trash it in the bin, in the banking hall. After trashing it, some might also go to the trash can and pick it up to make use of your information in any other way around the dim fit. Now, after approximately 10,000 American Airlines and United accounts they have, cyber criminals booked free flight and upgrade using these stolen credentials. Even though the frequent flyer miles were returned to the customers by the airline, this demonstrate the value of login credentials. And a criminal could also take advantage of your relationship. They could access your online account and your reputation to trick you into wiring money into your friends or family. And the criminal can send messages stating that your family or friends need to wire them money so that they can get home from abroad after losing their wallet. Can you see the extent that these cyber criminals can go? And the bad they have done to American airline. Wow. Now, the next the topic is they want your identity. Besides stealing your money for a short term monetary gain, the criminals want long term profit by stealing your identity. As medical costs rise, medical identity theft is also on the rise. And the identity theft, the identity thieves can steal your medical insurance and use your medical benefits themselves. And these medical procedures are now in the medical records. I believe we can all go through the material, not everything that will be. Reading and reading and trying to explain. So now, organizational data. You have different kind of organizational data, the traditional data, and the internet of things and big data. Traditional data are corporate data that include personal information, intellectual properties, and financial data. And this personal information includes application materials, payroll, offer letter, employment agreement, and any information used in making employment decisions. Internet of things and big data. With the emergence of the internet of things, there's a lot more data to manage and secure and secure. And IoT is a large network of physical objects, uh, such as sensor and equipment that extend beyond the traditional computer network. So all this connection plus the fact that we have expanded storage capacity and storage service through the cloud and virtualization lead to the exponential growth of data. And this data has created a new area of interest in technology and business called big data. So with the velocity, volume, and variety of data generated by the IoT and the daily operation of businesses, the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of this data is vital to the survival of the organization. Please, does anyone have questions? Hello, can someone reply? No question from my side, sir. <laughs> no question. Wow. 
okay. I hope this session is not that boring. I know it's theoretical, <laughs> not unlike the practical section. But without having the theoretical knowledge of about cyber security, there are little little things we might be ignoring when during the practical section. Also, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. They are known as the CIA triad. And is a guideline for information security for an organization. Confidentiality ensures the privacy of data by restricting access through authentication and encryption. And integrity ensures that the information is accurate and trustworthy. Why availability ensures that the information is accessible to authorized people. This CIA triad is a key aspect in cyber security. And we need to take cognizance of it. Because there are some data that are confidential and some are, uh, some organization makes use of confidentiality and integrity and availability, uh, availability. Like, for example, the AWS, Amazon Web Service, they make use of confidentiality and availability mostly. Though so when you read up the content, there are some explanations that are made as regard that. Okay, let's take confidentiality. It's another term for privacy. And company policy should restrict access to the information to authorized personnel and ensure that only those authorized individuals view the data. Just like I mentioned earlier, uh, on our profile on Facebook, there are some information that we can make privacy and we can make it public, or we can share it with some set of people on our friend list. So for example, a Java program developer should not have access to the personal information of all employees. An employee should receive training to understand the best practice in safeguarding sensitive information or to protect themselves and the company from attack. And we have method to ensure confidentiality and their data encryption by they are encrypting our data or information, making use of username, and ID, and password. Then two factor authentication and minimizing exposure of sensitive information. Now, as regard integrity, integrity is accuracy, consistency, and trustworthiness of the data during its entire life cycle. In the practical section, if we all notice, when we are downloading the Bob suit, you can see you can see a, an option for checksum. If you try to click it, it's used to check the integrity of the file you want to the Bob suit you wanted to download on our on our PC. If you click on the checksum and it notice that there's a slight change in the file then we won't be able to download it. So data must be on hot during transit and not changed by unauthorized entity. Now, when you are, during the practical session, you did an HTTP interception. And the next one, where you try to change the parameters, the parameters by changing the amount of the shopping item, then 
so that you can buy it because you don't have enough, enough fund. So those are the example of data integrity. Assuming there's a check saying there's data integrity with the programmer that developed the application, we won't be able to tweak the parameters and buy that goods at a minimal minimal amount. Backup must also be available to restore any corrupted data and checksum action can be used to verify integrity of the data during transfer. There is a tax on this checksum. This image, this is the operation, uh, the flow of how checksum works. We have our message or data, which is it might be plain text message, data or arbitrary length. Now there is a functionality programmers write to to hash to encrypt the message. Then the hash function give it a fixed length hash value. If we see the flow, like we have a plain text message, then if it's output. Is a different, we have a different entire thing, which is not which is not the main data we try to hash. So when we make use of checksum to verify the integrity of file or string of characters after they've been transferred from one device to another across our local network or the internet. Also, checksum are calculated with hash function. And some of the common checksums are MD5, SHA1, SHA256, and SHA512. There are so much. And the hash function makes use of mathematical algorithm to transform the data into fixed length and value that represents data as shown above. And after a file is downloaded, we can verify its integrity from the source with the one we generate using any hash calculator. So if we make use of the checksum while downloading the Bob suit, after we download it, if we make use of the checksum, so we upload the file, the checksum will now compare it with the original source and the one we uploaded to check if there is any alteration in it. And if there is, it will alert us, then we know that the file is not safe to use. So availability, so maintaining equipment, performing hardware repairs, keeping operating system and software up to date, and creating backups ensures the availability of the network and data to authorized to the authorized user and security equipment or software such as firewall guard against downtown due to attack such as denial of service we talked about this denial of service because of these contents so we have we also have a lab here compare data with the ash in this lab, we generate a hash for a file and use the hash value to compare the integrity of the file. Now, when we click on the link, it will direct us to a web page that will give us the instruction on how to make use of an hash, hash function. And also, I want us to make use of our email when trying to hash as the input data. Then I create a, a link where we can submit so that I can review it. Now, the impact of security breach and the consequences of the security breach. To protect an organization from every possible cyber attack is not feasible for a few reasons. The expertise necessary to 
the expertise necessary to set up and maintain the secure network can be expensive and attackers will always continue to find new ways to target network and eventually an advanced and targeted cyber attack will succeed so the priority will then be how quickly your security team can and respond to the attack to minimize the loss of data, downtime, and revenue. So I would like us to read more on that session. So in this picture, it lists some consequences of a security breach. We have real reputation, vandalism, theft, revenue loss, and damage intellectual properties. So there are a lot, but these are just a few that is being mentioned here. Now, example of security breach. The online password manager last pass detected unusual activities on the network in July 2015. This is an from a past act platform. So it turned out that hackers have stolen user email address, password reminders, and authentication hashes. But fortunately for the user, the, hack the hackers were unable to obtain anyone's encrypted password vaults. So even though there was a security breach, last part could still safeguard the user account information. So last pass requires email verification or multi-factor authentication whenever there is a new login from an unknown device or IP address. Most people make use of password manager. And we can see from this example that some password manager are vulnerable to attack. But making use of two multi-factor authentication, the users that are making use of the any kind of password managers platform. So we have another example, the high-tech toy maker for children. VTEC survived a security breach to database in November 2015, and this breach could affect millions of customers around the world. So we can read up on the examples. We have three examples. We can read up on the example. Now, here, this lab, what was taken? In this lab, we will explore a few security breaches to determine what was taken, what expert were used, and what you can do to protect yourself. So when we click on this link, it will take you to a web page. Yes, and I want you to observe the web page. There are two, 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 two check up on the sources and you make use of the form. There are some forms there. What was taken, what expert were they used in different scenarios of security breaches. So that is also that will also be a part of your assessment but i want you to first go through it because the assessment i will be releasing it will last for 30 minutes so i expect us to have jot down the our own findings from the two scenarios of security breaches so when i release the link for the assessment it's going to expire within 30 minutes so i want everyone to input their own observations. And there is also a mark for, for that. Now, attackers and cyber security professionals. The profile of a cyber attacker type of attack. Yeah, okay. On that, someone posted Say that we is the assessment today. Um, okay, the assessment is not today, but it will be tomorrow. 
But before to today expire, I want you to click on the lab and the lab what was taken and just go through it and note down on your own personal notes what was taken, what experts were used, and now you can protect yourself. There's a form, there's a format of how you are going to answer it. Now, when I now release the link of the assessment, it is your input you now submit so that it can be graded. So the profile of a cyber attacker, types of attackers. Attackers are individuals or, group, or groups who attempt to exploit vulnerability for personal or financial gain. And attackers are interested in everything from credit card to product design and anything with anything of value to us. They are interested in it. We have different types. We have white art attackers, gray art attackers, and black art attackers. So we explain, we talk more about that. And I hope we are actually training you to become a white art actor, not a black art actor. But to become a white art actor, you have to you have to know you have to become black art actors so that you can protect your organization. Why the gray art actors they are they are in between. So type of attackers, we have amateurs, hackers, organized hackers. Amateur are people are sometimes, these are people sometimes called script kiddies. They are usually, they are usually attackers to or no skill, skill, often using existing tools or structure found on the internet attack. This kid you just go to the internet, search for any any code that are related to whatever they want to do, then they will test run it. And some of these things are very, very injurious. While others are trying to demonstrate their skills and cause arms. And they may be using basic tools, but the result can still be devastating. So Attackers. This group of attackers break into computers or network to gain access. Depending on the intent of the breaking, these attackers are classified as white, gray, or black art. So the white art attackers break into network or computer system to discover weaknesses so that the security of this system can be improved. And these breakings are done with prior permission and and any results are reported back to the owner. So like in the practical class, we discover a vulnerability in a, an e-commerce platform. Then we take advantage of it. Then we report back. Then we can report back to the organization we are working to and let them know the vulnerabilities. Also, blood art hackers take advantage of any vulnerability for a legal, personal, financial, or political gain. And gray art attackers are somewhere between white and black art attackers. These gray art attackers may find a vulnerability in a system. And these gray art attackers may a vulnerability to the owner of the system if the action side with the agenda. And some great hackers publish facts about the vulnerability on the internet so that other attackers can exploit it. So the great, some example of great attackers are called activists. Yeah. So organized hackers. These hackers include organization of cyber criminals, activists, terrorists and state-sponsored hackers. 
cyber criminals are usually groups of professional criminals focused on control, power, and wealth. And the criminals are highly sophisticated and organized, and they may even provide cyber crime as a service to other criminals. But activists make political statements and to create awareness of issues that are important. Why state sponsored attackers gather intelligence to or commit sabotage on behalf of their government? For example, like the Russian and the America. They do they do that well. I don't know about our own country. So yeah, the explanation of white art hackers, gray art hackers, and black art hackers. Now, internal and external strengths. These are the table structure of cyber attackers. We have outsider and insider. In fact, in, insider, ins, insider attack is the most injurious attack because they have access to the organization infrastructures and network. And whatever attack they make might be difficult at times. It's always difficult to detect. So on the outsider, we have organized attackers, we have attackers and amateur. So internal security threats. This attack can originate from within an organization or from outside of the organization. As I've said earlier, an internal user, such as employee or contract partner, can accidentally or intentionally mishandled confidential data, threatening the operation of internal servers or network infrastructure devices and facilitate outside attack by connecting infected USB media into the corporate computer. System. Also, they can accidentally share email or web speed attackers can exploit vulnerability in network or computing devices or use social engineering to gain access. There's a lot about this social engineering. For example, on Twitter, some might post that um, if you are kidnapped, who is the first person you will call? Then people start commenting. People start commenting their father, their this. These are examples of social engineering. They are trying to know who they can benefit, when they kidnap you, who they can actually benefit, or they can even orchestrate the, the crime to the person you mentioned. So they are doing kind of social engineering techniques. Now, cyber warfare. Cyberspace has become another important dimension of warfare. Where nation carries out conflicts without the clashes of traditional troops and machines. And this allows countries with minimal military presence to be as strong as other nations in cyberspace. For example, we yeah, are a state-sponsored attack involved this stuckness malware that was designed to damage Iran's nuclear enrichment plan. So these are, these are examples of cyber warfare, the state-sponsored attacks. So you can read on the script of a video from Stortnet, and also we can check some other information that I've listed here. Now, the purpose of cyber warfare. The main purpose of cyber warfare is to gain advantage over adversary, whether they are nations or competitors. That is just the purpose of cyber warfare. So in summary, we are done with all uh, talking, talking, talking. So in summary, this chapters, so far we've explained the features and characteristics of cyber security, 
and we've explained why the demand for cyber security professional will continue to increase. The content explains why our personal online identity and data is vulnerable to cyber criminal. And we've talked about some tips on how we can protect our personal identity and data. Finally, this chapter probably explains cyber warfare and why nations and government need cyber security professionals to help protect their citizens and infrastructure. So we ought to actually move to a retreating chapter two topic, but due to my own availability last week, we are not able to do it. So, as I've said earlier, the lab, we are going to complete the lab this week. So by Saturday, I will release the link and the link will expire within 30 minutes. Why the other thing? I'll check here, then I will inform you. Please, okay. You can see Emory raised and so, You can speak on, you can ask your question. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, so please, I would like to find out what time on Saturday would the link be out for the test? Okay, okay, let me ask you, um, what time do you, do you think all of we can assess the, will be available to do the assessment? So I think we'll have to do a poll to that. But for me, I think any time from 4 p.m. is fine. For me. Are we not having any practical section on Saturday by 5? Uh, I think we are. I think yeah. we are. I'm not sure. From 4 to 5 tomorrow. We have a practical session from 4 to 5 p.m. tomorrow. Uh -huh. Okay. Then, okay. I want you to decide on it because I don't want to inconvenience anyone with the assessment because of the time time frame that it will expire. We can have it after the class. Okay. You know what? Let me leave you guys to discuss about it. So. Okay, sir. Then and I have the question. So the document okay. says uh, permission to download it. Is, was that intentional? Yes, it was intentional. Okay. Right. Don't worry. By the end of this bootcamp, we all can have access to the document. So, any any question? Any question? Okay. Is there any question or observation? Okay, I wound over to my my boss, <laughs> Mr. Adirogi. Yeah. Uh, all right, everyone, good evening. All right, so uh, good evening, Oluwa Shegun. Thanks for the session, and I believe everyone really enjoyed the session, right? So uh, it's nice to have you once again on the call, so that, uh, and thanks for the knowledge, you know. Uh, it is good when it comes to our theoretical session, but looking at I, don't mind me, I'm just a practical person. I don't like define, explain, all right? So, <laughs> so... <laughs> Don't mind me, all right? So uh, from what he has said, he has really expressed himself and he has explained a lot. You know, from the theoretical sessions, he has really covered the aspect in which we are doing in the practical. 
you understand? So you are trying to cover the black box, you are trying to cover the white box, you are going to cover the gray box, you know, testing, because basically as a penetration tester, in which me, I'm training you guys to be, it is what, uh, those are the things that are expected of you. And why do you think countries are trying to launch attack against each other? just to steal their, you know, their intellectual properties and the likes like that. That's what you talk about, you know, Russia and the U.S., you talk about China and U.S., they always are the both at the logger end, you know, coming talking about the uh, resources, types of technology, the chips and the likes like that, you know, productions. You find out that if you take your Infinix phone to U.S., it won't work. It's, I'm telling you, it won't work. You, you can try to travel from Nigeria and go to the U.S., go with an Infinix phone, you might not get network in some areas. But if you go with a Samsung or an iPhone, definitely you, your message will start popping in, you know, stuff like that. So those are the things, those are the reasons why, you know, you see that each of those countries fight against each other, all right? Okay, so those are the basic things, right? So it's a nice session. Thank you so much, Mr. Shelburne. Thanks for the session. And let me let you know that there's going to be, you know, uh, some set of questions that you'll be tested on all these theoretical sessions as well. Uh, right, so me, I might not test you that big on practical session, but I only expect you to be up to date. So if you are up to date, you are fine. Then, uh, Lawa, please, I've not gotten the list. I ask you to help me compile. Please, you can share with me once you have them. All right, so thanks. That's all for now. All right, bye. All right, thank you, Mr. Andirogi. It seems no one is just asking questions. I think my class is boring. <laughs> Not like the practical session where you do all the magic. But with time, I know you guys will get along. All right. So I'll be ending the meeting now. Or is there anything else you, you want to ask or any observation or anything? Yeah. Someone should please respond to <laughs> Francis Keshuku, you are trying to say something. I'm asking if there is any attendance. I've not seen anything like an attendance. It seems they've dropped the attendance during the session. I can see they've dropped this in 740. Can you all see the form? Okay. Thank you. I think the uh, I've, seen it, I've, seen it. I've seen that. Um... Okay. All right. So I'll be ending the meeting now. Okay. Someone said if and when we do decide, how do we communicate? You can communicate with me through the Slack channel or the Teams or the Zoom platform. And work on it. As a... I think our time is up. Oh, Hello, Aisha, are you there? Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Alicia, for the class. It has been an amazing session, and I'm sure everyone can say the same. Um, with regards to the timing, just as um, Alicia said, just communicate with him on the Zoom channel so you will know what time is convenient for everyone. Um, thank you, everyone, and have a great night.
Alicia, you can end the meeting for everyone. Okay, okay. All right, I will do that. Then.